Well, I'm very pleased to be joined by Mr Norbert Bollow. He is of the Just Net Coalition. He's one of the many members of civil society here at WISIS 2015. Mr Bollow, welcome. Thank you. Now, Mr Bollow, if I understand you correctly uh, from what I've read of your work, you believe that we're at a really rather profound time in the development of communication technology and that the stakes are potentially very high. What did you mean by that? Absolutely. I don't specifically mean the capability to communicate, to send data. I mean, I can put whatever I want to write into words, into digital words, no problem. I can put this on a website and you can download it if you are looking for my writing, no problem. There's a bit a bigger problem to find the people to communicate with. You know, when we were living in real villages as opposed to a global digital village, you sort of knew who is who and who might be interested in what you want to say and that kind of thing. Nowadays, there is some institutions who govern this social aspect of making contacts. And I would go so far to say that it's like a government. It has ministries called Google and Facebook and Twitter. And all those ministries, they happen to be not accountable to a parliament or to a popular vote kind of thing, like a proper government is accountable, it's democratic. No, they are accountable to the almighty dollar. And that is not democratic, especially given that we happen to live, not all of us, in the United States of America. So you're concerned that corporations, business, is involved in what you believe is essentially a person-to-person -person interaction. It often is. But in the middle there, there are these organisations that are free from governance in, in our sense. We don't know what they're doing or why they're doing it. This is what worries you. Um, I don't mind that the companies are there to provide a service and make money. That's fine. I mean, making money is what companies do. I don't mind, for example, an ISP doing this job of being in the middle, transmitting bits and bytes. What concerns me is that we have this kind of concentration of power. Internet is our new, our modern way of social interactions, of getting in touch with people. And this is sort of now being under control of something, somewhere. It's no longer the people themselves who build their social networks, their social contacts. It's being part of code. And that code is not under our control. It's under the control of business interests who try certain things, certain ways of connecting people. And if that way makes a profit, it stays. If it doesn't make a profit, with usually with very little announcement, they replace it by something different. And the big thing about it is they use this to harvest data. Personal information about me that they then use to target advertising. Okay, it's so not this is a very a concern, I'm healthy. sorry to interrupt, I didn't mean to interrupt, but this is a concern clearly that's very current at the moment. Um, how then? do we incorporate more democracy, which I guess is what you're asking for, into the actual way we run these, this extraordinary ecosystem, the, the communications technology? I think we cannot just graft some democracy onto corporations. That's not going to work. We, are, we need to build an alternative to this kind of system that relies on the gigantic concentrations of power for connecting people. We need a much more decentralized way of connecting people and a much more people-centered way. A key element of that is necessarily going to be free and open source software, which if the code is open, free to use by anyone, there will be more centers that can connect people. Well, Mr. Bolo, that's all we have time for today, but I thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to talk with you.